Beyond Good and Evil is a 2003 action-adventure video game developed and published by Ubisoft for the PlayStation 2 PC, Xbox and GameCube platforms. The story follows the adventures of Jade, an investigative reporter and martial artist, who works with a resistance movement to reveal a planet-wide alien conspiracy. The player controls Jade and allies, solving puzzles, fighting enemies, and obtaining photographic evidence. Michel Ancel, creator of the Raymond series, envisioned the game as the first part of a trilogy. The game was developed under the code name Project BG and E by 30 Ubisoft Pictures employees with production lasting more than three years. One of the main goals of the game is to create a meaningful story while giving players lots of freedom, though the game adopts a relatively linear structure. The game was received poorly when it was shown at E3 2002, and it prompted the developers to change some of the game's elements, including Jade's design. Incel also attempted to streamline the game in order to make the game more commercially appealing. Beyond Good and Evil was critically acclaimed. Critics praised the game's animation, setting, story, and design, but criticized the game's combat and technical issues. The game received a nomination for Game of the Year at the 2004 Game Developers' Choice Awards. While the game had a cult following, it was considered a commercial failure at launch. A full HD remastered version of the game was released on Xbox Live Arcade in March 2011 and on PlayStation Network in June 2011. A prequel, Beyond Good and Evil 2, is in development and was announced at E3 2017. Topic Gameplay Beyond Good and Evil is an action-adventure game with elements of puzzle-solving and stealth-based games. The player controls the protagonist, Jade, from a third-person perspective. Jade can run, move stealthily, jump over obstacles and pits, climb ladders, push or bash doors and objects, and flatten herself against walls. As Jade, the player investigates a number of installations in search of the truth about a war with an alien threat. In the game's interior spaces, the player solves puzzles and makes their way past enemies in order to reach areas containing photographic evidence. Jade's main tools are her Dai Zhou combat staff, a melee weapon, discs for attacking at range, and a camera. Jade's health, represented by hearts, decreases when hit by enemy attacks. It can be restored using fictional food items and can be increased beyond the maximum with PA1s that, when held by Jade or her companions, increases their life gauge by one heart. If Jade's health is depleted, the game will restart at the last checkpoint. Certain stealth segments later in the game automatically kill Jade if she is detected. At times, it is only possible to advance in the game with the help of other characters. These characters are computer controlled, and players direct them via contextual commands. For example, the player can order them to perform a super attack, either pounding the ground to bounce enemies into the air, allowing the player to hit them from long distances, or knocking them off balance, making them vulnerable to attack. These allies possess a health bar and are incapacitated if it is depleted. Jade can share some of her items, such as PA1s, with these characters. In addition to obtaining evidence and completing assignments, Jade's camera can take pictures of animal species in exchange for currency, and scan objects to reveal more information about the environment. When the gyrodisc glove is obtained, Jade can attack enemies or activate devices from a distance by using the camera interface. There are also various minigames and sub-missions offered by NPCs scattered throughout the world, a hovercraft is used to travel around the world, and also used for racing and in other minigames. Later, the spaceship Beluga is acquired. The hovercraft can dock with the spaceship. Both vehicles require upgrades in order to reach new areas and progress through the game. Upgrades are purchased using pearls that are collected throughout the game, by completing missions, exploring areas, filling in the animal directory or by trading credits for them. The vehicles have a boost ability, and can be repaired using a repair pod if damaged by enemies. Topic. Plot Topic Setting and characters Beyond Good and Evil takes place in the year 2435 on the mining planet of Hillies, located in a remote section of the galaxy. The architecture of the city around which the game takes place is rustic European in style. The world itself combines modern elements, such as email and credit cards, with those of science fiction and fantasy, such as spaceships and anthropomorphic animals coexisting with humans. 
As the game begins, Hillies is under siege by aliens called the Doms, who abduct beings and either drain their life force for power or implant them with spores to convert them into slaves. Prior to the opening of the game, a military dictatorship called the Alpha Sections has come to power on Hillies, promising to defend the populace. However, the Alpha Sections seem unable to stop the Doms despite its public assurances. An underground resistance movement, the Iris Network, fights the Alpha Sections, believing it to be in league with the Doms. Beyond Good and Evil's main protagonist, Jade, voiced by Jodie Forrest, is a young photojournalist. She resides in an island lighthouse that doubles as a home for children orphaned by Dom's attacks. Paige, voiced by David Gassman, a boar-like creature, is Jade's uncle and guardian figure. Double H, a heavily built human iris operative, assists Jade during missions. He wears a military-issue suit of armor at all times. Secundo, an artificial intelligence built into Jade's storage unit, the Synthetic Atomic Compressor SAC, offers advice and digitizes items. The main antagonists are the Dom's High Priest, who is the chief architect of the invasion, and Alpha Section's leader General Keck, who uses propaganda to gain the Hillian's trust, even as he abducts citizens to sustain the Dom's. Topic. Story Jade and Paige are taking care of the children of Hillies orphaned by the Doms. When meditating with one of the orphans outside, a Dom's siren sounds. Jade rushes to turn to turn the power on for the shield. She discovers she has run out of credits to pay for the shield. The lighthouse is left vulnerable to the meteor shower. One of the Dom's meteors crashes outside of the lighthouse. The Dom's monsters catches each of the children into their bodies. Jade is forced to fight these creatures to free the children. Jade then looks down into the hole left by Meteor and is captured by a Dom's monster. Jade is rescued by Paige and they work together to defeat the monster. The Alpha sections arrive just after Jade defeats the monster. Secunda finds a photography job for Jade, so that she can pay to turn the power back on for the shield. The job involves cataloging all the species on Hillies for a science museum. Jade is then contacted by a man in black to investigate and take pictures of a creature presumed to be Dom's twins in an abandoned mine on an abandoned island. The Dom's twins turns out the B antennae of a very large Dom's monster. Once defeated the man in black takes off his suit and a taxi car flies out of the black limousine. The man reveals he actually works for Iris Network. She is recruited by the Iris Network, which suspects that the Alpha Sections are behind planet-wide disappearances. Jade's first target of investigation is an Alpha Sections-run ration factory. She discovers evidence of human trafficking orchestrated by the Doms under the Alpha Sections authority. Along the way she rescues Double H, who was kidnapped and tortured by the Doms. Paige is abducted by the Doms and taken to an abandoned slaughterhouse where he and the other kidnapped victims are to be launched to a base on Hilly's moon, Selene. After failing to extract Paige from the slaughterhouse in time, Jade learns that he was, in fact, the secret chief of the Iris Network. Jade learns that the Alpha sections are being possessed and manipulated by the Doms. Using Beluga, the ship Paige used to travel to Hilly's, Jade and Double H go to the Doms' lunar base. There, Jade finds Paige dead after weeks of torture, but a strange power inside her brings back his soul, reviving him. After rescuing Paige, destroying Keck's command ship, transmitting her final report, and sparking a revolution, Jade confronts the Dom's high priest. She learns that her human form is the latest container to hide a power stolen from the Dom's centuries ago in the hope that the high priest, who must have spirit energy to survive, would starve to death. The High Priest managed to find a substitute energy in the souls of all those kidnapped from Hillies, and captures Paige and Double H to force Jade to submit to him. Using the stolen power within her, Jade is able to destroy the High Priest, though nearly losing control of her soul in the process, and then revives and rescues those that have been abducted. In a post credit scene back on Hillies, a Dom spore grows on Paige's hand as the screen fades to black. Topic development Beyond Good and Evil was developed by Michel Ancel, the creator of the Raymond video game, at Ubisoft's Pictures Studio in France. The game was developed under the codename, Project BG&E, with production lasting more than three years. A group of 30 employees composed the development team. Ubisoft's chief executive officer, Yves Guillemot, fully supported the project and frequently met with the team. 
After years working on Raymond, Incel wanted to move on to something different. He recalled that the goal of Beyond Good and Evil was to pack a whole universe onto a single CD, mountains, planets, towns. The idea was to make the player feel like an explorer, with a sense of absolute freedom. A second goal behind Beyond Good and Evil's design was to create a meaningful story amid player freedom. Incel said that the linear nature of the gameplay was necessary to convey the story, player freedom was an experience between parts of the plot. He also strove to create a rhythm similar to a movie to engage and delight players. The game drew on many influences and inspirations, including the Miyazaki universe, politics and the media, and the aftermath of the September 11 attacks. In creating the lead character, Incel's wife reportedly inspired the designer, who wanted to portray a persona with whom players could identify. Beyond Good and Evil was first shown publicly at the 2002 Electronic Entertainment Expo, where it received a negative reception. Originally more artistically ambitious and resembling games like ICO, the game was substantially changed in order to make it more commercially appealing. Jade, originally a teenage girl, was redesigned to be more powerful and befitting of her job. The game was also shortened by removing long periods of exploration, due to Incel's dislike of this aspect of gameplay in The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. The development team was demoralized by the changes, with Incel commenting that the finished game resembled a sequel more than a reworking. Prior to release, playable previews of the game were offered in movie theaters. Topic audio The soundtrack of Beyond Good and Evil was composed by Christoph Errol, who was hired by Incel because of his background in film. Hubert Chevillard, a director with whom Incel had worked in the past, had also worked with Errol on a television special, The Pantan Pirouette, and referred him to Incel. Errol was assisted by Letitia Pansonel, who orchestrated the pieces, and his brother Patrice Errol, who performed some of the sound effects and singing. The soundtrack incorporates a wide variety of languages and instruments from around the world. Mainly Bulgarian lyrics were chosen for the song, Propaganda, which plays in the game's Akuta Bar, to allude to the Soviet propaganda of the Cold War. It uses a recording of a telephone conversation by Errol with a female Bulgarian friend to represent the government's control of the media. It also incorporates Arabic string instruments and Indian percussion. A song called Funky Mullah was originally planned for the Akuta Bar, but it was replaced by Propaganda because Errol decided that its muezzin vocals, recorded on September 8, 2001, would have been in bad taste in the wake of the September 11 attacks. Fun and Minigames, a song that plays during hovercraft races and other minigames, includes Spanish lyrics. The lyrics for Dom's music were created from a fictional language with prominent rolling R sounds. The crashing metal sound effects of Metal Gear Doms, the music played during a boss fight, were recorded from the son of Errol's neighbor playing with scrap metal. The voices in the City of Hillies were also recorded by Errol himself. The music has never been published as an album, though it has been released in its entirety as a free download by Ubisoft. The soundtrack is featured in the Video Games Live International Concert Tour. Topic HD Edition A full HD remastered version of the game was developed by Ubisoft Shanghai, released on Xbox Live Arcade in March 2011 and on PlayStation Network in June 2011. It features improved character models and textures, as well as a modified soundtrack. Achievements, trophies and online leaderboards were also added. The HD edition was made backwards compatible on the Xbox One and available free to gold members from August 16, 2016 through September 1, 2016 as part of the Games with Gold program. Ubisoft released Beyond Good and Evil HD for retail in Europe on September 21, 2012. The retail package includes Beyond Good and Evil HD, Outland and From Dust. Topic reception Prior to its release, official U.S. PlayStation Magazine and PlayStation Magazine praised the game's showing at the 2003 Electronic Entertainment Expo and described it as one of the best titles on display. Beyond Good and Evil received generally positive reviews from critics. Aggregating review website Metacritic gave the Xbox version 87 one hundredths, the GameCube version 87 one hundredths, the PlayStation 2 version 86 one hundredths, the Xbox 360 version 84 one hundredths, the PlayStation 3 version 83 one hundredths, and the PC version 83 one hundredths. The game's graphics were generally well received. 
In reviewing the GameCube version, Game Informer wrote that every moment of Beyond Good and Evil looks as good as a traditional RPG cutscene and that the game's effects and character animations were amazing. On the other hand, John Hicks of PC Format wrote that while some effects were excellent, the game's otherwise unspectacular graphics were unwelcome reminders of the game's console roots. OneUp.com, an official U.S. PlayStation magazine, cited glitches such as frame rate as irksome, because the game did not appear to tax the console's hardware. Edge commended the game for its storytelling and design, but criticized its plot as unable to match Jade's initial appeal, becoming fairly mundane without the darkness and moral ambiguity suggested by the title, with Jade's everyman appeal undermined by the revelation of her mysterious hidden identity. Dan Toos of SMH called the game's setting dark, baroque, and earthy, a far cry from the squeaky clean action of the Final Fantasy games, and described the game as a very European take on the role playing genre and one of the best adventure games in years. Star Dingo of GamePro commented that the game was a jack of all trades, master of none that never really lives up to its title, adding that its vision could have been more focused. Among complaints were control issues and a lack of gameplay depth. Game Informer's Lisa Mason wrote that the game's controls were serviceable, but simplistic, and that she wished she could do more with the character. PC gamer's Kevin Rice found most of the gameplay and its exploration refreshing, but called hovercraft races not much fun and felt combat was the game's weakest element. Edge called the gameplay interaction hollowed out, as an unintended consequence of Incel's attempt to streamline the game. Beyond Good and Evil was not a commercial success. The game saw poor sales upon its release in the 2003 Christmas and holiday season. Retailers quickly decreased the price by up to 80%. Official U.S. PlayStation Magazine staff attributed the poor sales of the game, among many other 2003 releases, to an oversaturated market, and labeled Beyond Good and Evil as a commercial disappointment. In retrospect, Incel noted that consumers at the time were interested in established franchises and technologically impressive games. Coupled with the number of big titles available, he stated that the market was a poor environment for Beyond Good and Evil and that it would take time to be appreciated. The official U.S. PlayStation Magazine staff further commented that the lack of marketing from Ubisoft and the game's odd premise naturally reserved it to obscurity. Part of the disappointing sales stemmed from Ubisoft not knowing how to market the title, something that Ubisoft North America CEO Laurent Detoc labeled as one of his worst business decisions. At the time, Ubisoft's marketing efforts were more focused on the release of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Ubisoft's former North American Vice President of Publishing, Jay Cohen, and its European Managing Director, Elaine Corre, attributed the commercial failure of the game to a lack of marketing. The gameplay was there, the technical excellence was there but perhaps the target audience was not there, Corre told the BBC. Corre later commented that the Xbox 360 release in 2011 did extremely well, but considered this success too late to make a difference in the game's poor sales. The game was intended to be the first part of a trilogy, but its poor sales placed those plans on hold at the time. Topic awards and Legacy Beyond Good and Evil was nominated for and won many gaming awards. The International Game Developers Association nominated the title for three honors at the 2004 Game Developers' Choice Awards, Game of the Year, Original Game Character of the Year Jade, and Excellence in Game Design. Ubisoft titles garnered six of eleven awards at the 2004 Imagina Festival in France, with Beyond Good and Evil winning Best Writer and Game of the Year Team Award. The Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences nominated the game for Outstanding Achievement in Character or Story Development at the 2004 Interactive Achievement Awards. In IGN's The Best of 2003, the PlayStation 2 PS2 version won Best Adventure Game, while the GameCube version received Best Story, Beyond Good and Evil's audio was also recognized. The game was nominated for the Audio of the Year, Music of the Year, Best Interactive Score, and Best Sound Design awards at the second annual Game Audio Network Guild Awards. It was similarly nominated for the Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition and Outstanding Achievement in Sound Design awards at the 2004 Interactive Achievement Awards. At the third annual National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers Awards, the game was nominated for the following categories, Game Design, Original Adventure Game, Control Design, Winning 2, Game Design, and Original Adventure Game. In 2007, Beyond Good and Evil was named 22nd Best Xbox Game and 12th Best GameCube Game of All Time by IGN. 
Game Informer listed the title 12th on its Top 25 GameCube Games list. In another list, Top 200 Games of All Time, Game Informer placed the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube versions of Beyond Good and Evil as the 200th best. The official Nintendo magazine ranked it as the 91st best Nintendo game, while Nintendo Power ranked it 29th. Nintendo Power placed the GameCube version as the 11th best GameCube game of all time in its 20th anniversary issue. Destructoid ranked the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox versions as the 6th best game of the decade. In 2010, IGN listed it at number 34 in their Top 100 PlayStation 2 games. GamesRadar placed it as the 70th best game of all time. Topic. Sequel Incel stated his desire to produce a sequel to the game. Ubisoft announced at the Ubides 2008 opening conference that there would be a second game. A sequel, tentatively titled Beyond Good and Evil 2, is currently in development, although the project was temporarily halted to focus on Raymond Origins. Michel Incel has hinted that Jade would have a new look for the game. In early 2016, Destructoid published a rumor that the game was being funded by Nintendo as an exclusive to their upcoming console codenamed NX. On September 27, 2016, Michel Incel posted an image to Instagram with the caption, Somewhere in System 4. Thanks hash Ubisoft for making this possible. On October 4, Incel stated that Beyond Good and Evil 2 was in pre-production. Ubisoft confirmed Incel's claim on October 6, 2016. On June 13, 2017, during E3 2017, a teaser trailer was released. The game was confirmed to be a prequel, with a focus on a younger page. <laughs>